Hi, I'm Bernadette. And I'm Jessica, and this is Margo, and this is our DIY tiny house in Austin, Texas. Is it okay if I tell people that we met on Hinge? And I said, yeah, of course. Like, I don't, we don't need to make it like more romantic and say we yeah. met in like an aisle of the grocery store. Yeah, we were store. like, we met in like the aisle 17 and HEB or yeah. something like that. But yeah, we just met on Hinge. It's not too exciting. Um, but she moved here from Philly or the Philly area a little more than three years ago. And then we met on Hinge like two or three days later, went on a tour of Austin for our first date and it was at least eight hours long. Um, yeah. and Coffee then shop, tacos. Pizza, SoCo, yeah. shopping, so many things. And then we've been together ever since. It was first date and done, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, and we just celebrated our three-year anniversary in September. I'm a nanny, and it like gets me to explore the city with the kids, even if I'm just going to different playgrounds, you always get to go to different neighborhoods and stuff. I'm an attorney, I've been an attorney for four years. I currently work for the state. I do contract law for the housing department. Uh, I went to college in Austin, I've been back since I graduated law school. You know, being a lawyer, it's very, especially contract law, it's very like detail oriented, and I'm constantly reading papers and and, and it's, not boring but like also boring and so I need something to do with my hands to be creative and that's usually working in the house or the random art project or something like that but my next project is fixing my 1966 Mustang from high school get to tinker with it a bit and my mechanic does most of the work but he, he likes he to teaches you too yeah he likes to explain things in a way that I understand so <laughs> We've lived in the tiny house for just over a year. My dad and I built it for the most part. We had some help um, here and there. And the dimensions are 24 feet long by eight and a half wide and 13 feet tall. We're parked in Southwest Austin in a neighborhood called Oak Hill and just off of 290. This is our patio space. It's nice that we have enough room out here to entertain because we don't have space in there to put all our friends. We've got plenty of seating, we've got our grill, a nice place to sit and have dinner when it's not 100 degrees out. Um, our shed with all of our outdoor materials and winter clothes, a little garden over there. And this is the deck that Jess's dad built for us. Let's check out the inside. Welcome to our home. So when we were building it and designing it, our goal was to make this look professionally done and that we didn't build it ourselves. So we wanted it to be very pretty and very homey and our aesthetic is very similar so lots of white lots of very clean sage green a couple of the things that were requirements for me when designing the house one was a peninsula in the kitchen so i wanted the stove to be over here uh, just kind of flow nicely the idea was initially to put bar stools there for extra seating but we have a dog and her dog bed took priority Right here to our left is our kitchen. Um, and there's a few distinct choices that we made to kind of compromise on. Uh, down here we have these holders for our dog bowls that we can get out of the way for people coming in the front door. It was important to me to have a gas stove because I was tired of the electric stoves in the apartments we were living in. The, the way to control the heat is a lot easier with gas. Um, we've got it hooked out just in the front. A tiny house necessity with a dog. We've got our tabletop vacuum cleaner and then we've got this big sink we like the look of it the farmhouse sink was important to both of us um, in terms of design but it's also very functional because we do a lot of dishes and we don't have a dishwasher we've got our tiny little tabletop composts 
important to us to keep our waste to a minimum, especially here in Austin where we can put our compost out on the street. Uh, we keep our dishes up here and then over here we wanted to have a mix of some closed cabinetry and then some open for, you know, some of the unique things that we like to display. Yeah, our fridge is a little bit smaller, but every time we get groceries, I am shocked to find that we can still fit everything we need. Even shopping at Costco, we can fit everything we need in this little guy. It works great. And then over here by the window, we've got all our dry goods in our pantry and our trusty uh, hearth and hand cabinet. If we move this fridge, which is easier than you think, um, we've got a little folding door back here that we've got some shelves in there with towels and sheets and just odds and ends that we don't want to let any space go to waste. So that's why I've got that little door back there. So I don't remember my first exposure to the tiny house world, whether it was Pinterest or Instagram or HGTV, but I was interested in the idea. Um, my dad is pretty handy. He built barns and stuff when we were kids. So I thought, oh yeah, we could do that. And then I studied abroad in law school and uh, a girl that I went to law school with that was there, she built a tiny house with her dad. And so we started talking about it and I was like, tell me everything. And it seemed pretty doable. And so when we got back from Europe, I told my dad, I was like, oh, I want to build a tiny house. And he was pretty against it. He's like, you know, that's not what you do. You put a down payment on house. And that's what you do. So I made a binder that was like this big of budgets, instructions, like DIY, all the studies and research to show it could help me pay off my law school debt. I told him I don't want to go into more debt as a 22 year old, maybe when I graduated law school, I didn't know where I wanted to end up. I didn't want to buy a house and then be stuck in a city somewhere. And at that point, it was just me and my dog. So I showed him that and I told him I was like I can't put $20,000 down on a house where I don't know if that's where I want to be but I can spend $20,000 to build a house and have housing anywhere I want to go in the states and that kind of convinced him um, he was like okay you put a lot of thought into this we could probably do it three or four years to actually finish building it because almost all of it was out of pocket so it's pretty slow build my dad is just recently retired so he was working at a chemical plant and so it was when he was off is when he would work on it and not every time because it's not his house and it's not his life so just when he could um, we couldn't really do it in the summers because Texas is really hot and some of my dad's friends helped out we had cousins come in a couple of days and spend like all day building the frame it was just a community project and then at the end, it came down to a timeline of we have two months to move into this house. And we had already um, canceled our lease in our apartment. And so it was a really like crunch time and we weren't sure if we were going to finish. And so we hired a contractor to finish up the last couple things. I'm not actually sure how much a tiny house costs. At first, early production days, I would keep track of every receipt. And then well, it your just... Initially, you were like, I'm trying to to make sure it costs under... 20000 was my Your goal was under budget. twenty grand. yeah. I think we were somewhere between sixteen and 20000 which is kind of a big range. But I don't think we went above 20000 If it was, it wasn't much over. Now for a brief message from our sponsor, Upside. Inflation blows. Price increases at the pump and at the grocery store really add up, especially if you're trying to save up for something big like a tiny home build. That's why we think Upside is awesome. It's a super easy to use app that lets you earn cash back when you buy groceries, gas, or eat out. Despite sounding too good to be true, Upside is 100% legit. And I appreciate that they don't sell my personal info to third parties which is probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. And because Upside users earn hundreds of dollars a year. Cha-ching! I love earning cash back from just eating at my favorite Mexican restaurant. The extra dough I get back goes towards our bus conversion. Sweet! Download the free Upside app. Use our promo code TINY and get an extra 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. And over here, between the kitchen and the bathroom, we have a little area with our calendar that we update every month. 
in our work bags. And then to the other side on the fridge, we have a full length mirror that we've stuck on here so we can get ready in the mornings. The goals for the bathroom were to utilize the storage base as much as possible. Um, we didn't get to do that as much as I would have liked, but we have a full size vanity here that is stocked to the brim with all of our stuff with two women. We have a lot of skincare products, clothes. Um, so we've kind of utilized that. And behind our towels here, we have hanging basket storage and we have medicines and just things that we use every day. And then we're able to hide that with our towels. My plan when starting the build was to be in this house for a very long time like maybe 10 years or 15 years and I wanted it to be like fully sustaining for an adult and that meant washer and dryer that meant full-size refrigerator that meant a regular toilet I wanted all the comforts of a regular home and a tiny home and so I didn't just want to have a shower because what if I had a hard day and I wanted a bath and I wanted to soak so I wanted to make sure I had a bath for those purposes and then when it's too cold outside I can bathe my dog in here or whatever need be so I didn't want to give up that luxury just because I was living in a tiny home and so I found a bathtub that was almost full size and as a short person it's full size and it was perfect so uh, I went with that and then under here we have our water heater and then more storage we call that our coat closet because all of our coats are under there Okay, and welcome to our bedroom loft. We imagined that this loft would have a little bit more storage for our clothes, like, you know, how you get ready in your bedroom in a typical house. So the shelf is there behind us as sort of a barrier to the rest of the house. And we've got some clothes storage there of things we don't wear as often. And then back here, we've just got like heating pads and things for aromatherapy. You know, the smallest part is where our heads fall, so there was a transition period where I'd wake up in the middle of the night and hit my head several times. But you get used to it and you figure out how much you can move around, and it's kind of cozy now to have a little hideaway up here, and we don't do anything other than sleep up here anyway, so it works. It's hard to make the bed, it's hard to put the sheets on and things like that, but um, you have to be intentional about your use, and it's nice now. It was a big transition for me because, as you've heard, Jess like did all of this before she met me or while we were getting to know each other. So it was for a while it was like, OK, are we going to still be together when the time comes to transition? And I was like, we're probably still going to be together. And then it was, well, we should live together in a bigger space before we live together in a smaller space. You know, it's a big transition to live with someone in general. So once we were getting to know how we function living together, it's like, OK, well, that that little tidbit about her is not going to work for me when we live in 300 square feet so I just kind of started being really direct and saying look when we live in the tiny house like you can't leave your dishes here and when we live in the tiny house I'm really going to need you to I don't know like make the bed in a certain way or different tidbits being like this is fine now when you can close the door to this room or something but I want to let you know that I won't be able to let go of this when we live in a smaller space because I'm like more type a like want everything a certain way and like clean and she's like that but to a lesser extent so we lived in the other apartment for 13 months so that was like enough time to work through a lot of things and then once we got here a lot of people of course assume that you fight all the time when you live in less space and we haven't and I don't know if that's because we like are that in love or because we did the work ahead of time like and we're really clear about what we wanted or if it was just luck but yeah, people always ask when they come and visit, like, do you guys get sick of each other? And we really don't. We, and I work inside the home and she works outside the home. So we have eight hours away from each other all day. Yeah. So by the time 6 p.m. comes, we're like, oh, let's hang out. Let's cook dinner. Let's watch movies. When we have a day off, we try to go and do something. So we're not constantly here. And if we are, it's pretty nice. We just open the windows, hang out and chill. Um, so the space hasn't negatively affected our relationship in that way. And here in the living room, we have our couch, which actu actually has underneath storage that we keep clothes in. 
And it also folds down to be a spare bed in case we need one. We have all of our artwork. And we built these shelves ourselves. And I'm a big vinyl girl. So we have my dad's old stereo system, vinyl, my vinyl collection. And Bernadette is a big reader, so we have lots of books. It's actually a couple layers thick. This is Bernadette's vintage chest that we also keep clothes in, blankets, things like that, shoes. And we have this Ikea dresser over here. We have a standard AC. It works pretty well. I think in retrospect, we might have gotten a, one of the split level ones. But with this, the fan, and then I have a tiny fan on my side of the bed, it's pretty cool. For the fall, we mostly open the windows. We don't turn the AC on until it gets a little hot in the afternoons. But yeah, it works out pretty well for us. Over here, we have our dog's area. She mainly sleeps on the couch, but she does enjoy chilling in her bed. So these are our Margo hooks. We have a couple around the house. Um, just when we have people over in our big apartment, we had her, a crate that we could put her in when we had people over if she got a little too excited. And we don't have that now. So we put these around the house to be able to clip her. So if we needed some privacy in the kitchen or the living room or whatever, we can hook her up with these elastic bands and it kind of calms her down, gives her a safe space to just calm down in. I still wouldn't necessarily choose this. I love my clothes, I love my space, I love like, I'd love to have a dining table again one day, something like that. But especially with the rising prices of rent in Austin, I see the benefits as time goes on to living here and we're still in Austin, so we're still yeah. accessible to all those things we want. Finding a place to put the tiny house in Austin was kind of hard. Um, that was one of the most stressful points because yeah. we were getting down to the wire with our lease and then Jess found this spot through Facebook. Yeah, there's a tiny house Austin community on Facebook and I posted in there several times of trying to find a place. I think I expected to pay a little less than what we are, but the landlord of this place reached out and he had just finished fixing it up about 10 to 15 minutes from downtown. I have offices downtown. She works not too far from downtown. So we wanted to be close. It's There's a Target down the street. There's a Whole Foods down the street. So it's close to everything. My gym's across the street. It's a great place for Margo to run safely. There's a little greenway in our neighborhood. Great neighborhood to walk around in with the dog. It's really safe here. Like they, really it gets safe. good ratings in terms of safety. Like, you know, there's a cute little neighborhood and there's two elementary schools down the street. So that always bodes well. Yeah, it just ended up being a great area. So our rent just increased to 850. It was 750 for our first year. And it includes water and lawn care. The tiny house has allowed us to save more money. In our previous apartment, we were paying almost double what we're currently paying. And now I'm able to put that money towards savings. So, you know, we hope to get married soon. So we've got a wedding to save for. We have emergency funds, 401k, all the adult stuff. We are saving for a bigger house. So our goal of being in a bigger space and not necessarily our like end all be all home, but just a bigger space would be when we are ready to have children. So a couple years, so we say five years just because that's like a rough estimate of when that'll be. And I guess that's four years now. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis and I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good one.